Okay. Shell program. Any, as you know, any command that works in the shell can be put in a file. And when you run that file, the command will run. For example, you can just type ls in a file and save the file and then run the file and it'll give you ls. Um, shebang line, we all know what the shebang line is, right? We've talked yeah. about that a number. Okay. So here is a basic loop in, in a bash. Notice I have a shebang line. And uh, and I do for I in A, B, C. See that? Can you let me in? Oh, yeah, now you're at. What's the top line? It's the shebang line. That's the, right That's the shebang line. That just tells it what interpreter we're running. Um, so ABC is essentially like items. It's a different kind of for loop. It's not your typical for loop. The typical for loop that you know from C is like exactly. It's, it's, like, it's like four I equals zero as long as I is less than this. This is for this is sometimes called for each, or here we call it a for in. Two people waiting. Admit. You're in the process of joining. I'm in the very long process. Still, still joining. But he's in right. So you understand this for I in A, B, C? It's essentially saying I is the variable and it gets the value A, and then it's by B and C. And each time that's an iteration of the loop. Why is it doing it on this one each time with the travel order? Because echo, that's just the nature of echo. I mean, echo like, normal when you put the new line. It's like an echo printing line, you can actually suppress it. I think there's a minus n sign, like do not print new line. Um, you can check that out. But the, the echo by default just prints on new line. So whatever I did there, um, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, comments. You ever notice that the comments are actually like the shebang line? We start with a pound sign. Um, now there's a tricky thing which brings up a lot of people when when you define a variable i think this might be reviewed we have to talk about this when you define a variable in a in shell you have an equal sign as an yeah. operator but no spaces yeah. and if you have any spaces then it, it's like it, it won't work it won't recognize what you're doing if, but another thing you have to know is that a variable does not have a dollar in front of it and when you're declaring, but or when you're defining it. Anytime you use an assignment operator that equals, then you don't put a dollar sign in front of the variable. It just knows. If there's an equals after it, it must be that the previous thing was a variable. But in other circumstances, you put a dollar in front of the variable. If, um, there are two ways. Let's say you want a variable to be hello world. There are two ways to do it. One is do quote hello world quote, and the other is hello backslash space world. Because normally the space indicates that that's the end of the variable name of the of the, of the value that you're assigning. So the space here we want it to be part of the value, so we need to put a backslash. Oh, backslash space. Backslash and then the space, or you can enclose the whole thing in quotes and then notice example so i equals my variable in the my variable i had to put a dollar in front of it otherwise it would have assigned i the value my variable where would the quotes have gone over there gone or before h and oh, after t right. and after o okay uh next here is um, using something that we talked about before, which is the backtick. And so normally I would say for I in A, B, C, but here I can say for I in and then take the, the output of the command ls my direction. So I'm not actually, if I, if I wouldn't have the backticks there, I would first be ls and then it would be my direction. But here I want it to be 
whatever the result of running the command ls my directory is. So ls my directory might be 25 files. So then I will get each one of those files one by one. And then I just printed uh, A, which I defined to be the value nothing, and uh, and then the directory. So it'll print That's nothing. Like the dollar sign before you The dollar sign means yeah. the variable. Oh. Okay. If I would have printed without the variables, and why is that? What's your name? Yeah. Daniel. If I would have Daniel, if I would have printed it without the dollar sign, what would it have done? It would print AI, AI, AI. If I wouldn't use any dollar signs. Oh, because the dollar, the dollar, I don't mean it's not the value A, but the variable. Wait, if I do a dollar, uh, if you do a dollar I, then it would do A. And then dollar i, and then no, no, then it would do a, and then whatever my direct a plum one, a plum two, um, a. It made it sound like it's gonna be yeah. like, um, no, each variable has to have a dollar. I guess it must be yeah, like a backslash will be a dollar. Uh, backslash dollar will give me a dollar. Is this fine to learn? Or should I tell him to reboot the computer and then we wait seven minutes or, or everything will follow this way? Hey, while we wait, watch your uh, recordings. <laughs> hey, you can do it at home. Um, <laughs> let's go on. In the there is a sofa she or a chair that's on. I need a protecting the zoom, maybe. That's so true. Oh, my God. Okay. Bloom one. Okay. Oh, exit. So use exit to end the script before the end. So you see, I can just write exit anywhere I want, and it'll end. The, it'll end. It. See that? I, I only printed the loop once. Oh, by the way, I used the other form of running. Notice I didn't use backtick. I used the dollar parentheses. That also is a form of of uh, running a command. They're just the same thing. They're just the same thing. For your, I, I think I have a discussion about the difference. I don't remember if I. Did. Um, there is a difference. Then there's a minus E flag, which I which was in one of your homework this time. The bash shell script um, will attempt to run every command you write. So if one command fails, that's a normal condition. You know, there's a normal state of a, of, of, of a bash shell is that it runs everything that you give it. If, and if one thing fails, so that thing failed, but the next thing is going to continue. It's like, uh, if you're shooting a bullets in a gun and one of them is dead, so the next one will go. I don't know. Maybe no, yeah, it makes sense. Sense. that doesn't what happen. The opposite. Gun, gun jams. Gun jams. You gotta, you gotta do on my social media. Uh -huh. Okay. So you're right. Can use the power of a bullet to, to reload. Yeah. So it's gotta, the opposite of that. You gotta, in other words, the way <laughs> the, the way that the way the shell the way the shell normally works is it runs the command. If it, if it runs, yo, good. If it doesn't run, it goes to the next command. It, it just keeps running every command, and if they all fail, they all fail, and half of them work, half of them work, whatever it is. But if you want the script to stop running as soon as one command fails, then you can use minus E flag. Um, this is useful when the future commands depend on the success of a previous command. Like, for example, if I want to you know, move the, and I don't know, if I want to copy a file to another name and then delete the original one, if it failed to copy, I don't want to delete it now. So I want to delete the original. Uh, okay. Example, defining a range of variables in a for loop. So this is another way to do your for loop, which is actually with this, with this braces zero dot two dots, 10. It's dot the two dots. And what it means is zero to 10. It's kind of like for i equals zero, as long as i is less than 10, you know, i plus plus. Because in this case, it actually is zero to 10, it's 11 times. You see that? This will actually print 11 times. Did I that is yes, because I did zero to 10. If it is zero to nine, it would be zero to nine. Oh, it's, that? it's whatever numbers I give it. I don't have to do zero to 10. It's not the equivalent of what I said. It's equivalent yeah. of less than 11, so or less than or equal to 10. That syntax works, zero and then dot, dot. Zero, that is this weird syntax specifically for a list. And it actually, yeah. So you can use it in other contexts than a for loop. You do like A to Z also. So what? You do A to Z type of form. Uh, no, yeah. as in that command, just generates, at least I don't know. I never tried that. That, that command just generates a list of yes, that, that command list. generates a list. So you and could say you could do like you could do ls a 
parentheses zero dot dot ten parentheses, and then you would print any five. Then you would do like be like you wrote ls a zero a one a two a three a four. It's like uh, very much like Python. Yeah. Well, Python and and uh, what I learned was PHP. That was kind of the popular thing before Python. And the popular thing before PHP was something called Perl. They're all similar. Mm -hmm. Perl, Python, and PHP. They're all based on shell. They're all scripting languages. So the first scripting language is what we're learning now. We're learning the primordial scripting language, the original scripting language. And then everything, and then what PHP is, I don't know, I don't know so much Python, but I think Python also, it's like they combine C++ with with some of the things of scripting and then they put some people to take plus. Thank you. Now look at this, the dot dot two. That means count by twos. So I do dot dot tens, dot dot two. So that gives me what the increment is. So I can increment by five to whatever I want. You also go the other way around. You can be like 10 to one on negative one. 10. As in, if you gave it the parameters of 10, dot 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 one. One dot, dot, will go one. down. Um, I'm not sure. Assuming that the step lines up, that it would go negative. I suppose, yes. Um, okay. Using test with it. For strings, is not equal. For strings, is not equal. Equal as equal. in what's it for called? String not you, equal is not equal and equal is equal. As in for uh for integers, you would use uh bid dash eq for strings to use the actual symbols. I believe this was something that this is from the I think that it should be there. Yeah. For strings, not equal is is exclamation mark equals and equal is single equals. So therefore I can say if the I'm using a test. This is called a test. Is similar, did we talk about that before? No. Yeah. We didn't talk about it. Yeah. Somehow we talked about this, even though it's really not our topic. It wasn't our topic. Yet. Oh, in the lab? In the lab, yeah. we had to make sure that we were trying to get into it. What's wrong? We were trying to test whether it's an executable or not. Uh, so this brace. It actually is the best thing. Which string? Did you re upload using Moodle? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but this is for me to play. I forget it. Um, it's a single equal. It should read like this: for strings, use not equals. Use for not equal for strings. If you want not equals, then use exclamation mark equals. If you want equals, use single equals. How do you assign them? Also single equal. It all depends on context. Okay. It depends on context. If once you put the square brace, then it, it looks won't perfect. allow you to do it. And then you won't, first of all, ah, I'll tell you. you can't assign assignment it. is without spaces. Wait, also, also without wait, also, and this has to have spaces. Wait, but this is also. You understand there's spaces here. I space equals clue or not equals clue. So also once it's a space, so then it's not assignment. Also there's also a dollar sign on Well, that would just be a that would just be a syntax error. Also, if you would try to do an assignment with a with a dollar sign, it would be a syntax error. But here, notice this is space, so that's what tells us that. But also, it's in the context of the square braces, right? And the square, the left square brace, is actually something called a test. It's 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 a it's still command the square brace, yes. right? It's, it, well, you, you the look left up. square brace. It's not really like braces like in C plus plus. Right? The left square brace is actually a um, shortcut or a uh, AKA, an alternate way of, 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 of writing the command test. There's a command T-E-S-T. -E you can actually do man test, and it'll show you all the possible uh, things you can test for. Because that's what I'm doing here, I'm testing for. I'm testing if clone one is not equal to whatever I is. And the right one is for cosmetic reasons, right? Uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah, it doesn't change it. Well, I think it you actually, try that. I don't think so. I sure. think it's showing it's showing that it ends the test. Because if you didn't write, yeah, I think it just says the first thing. I mean, otherwise you have to do and or something like that. I think. No, I'm not 100 percent no, sure. I always write it like this. The 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 semicolon. Though this is an interesting thing, which uh, I didn't understand fully. I think until recently, which is that the semicolon there at the end is not necessary. 
We saw that in the lab. You don't actually saw it. You only need that semicolon there if you if don't you have a new line. If you want, if you if you would just do if and then the test and then just write um, and enter, and then the next line is then, then you're okay also. So this is an if then. If this is true, then do this, and then phi, phi fi means you're finishing the if. So you can have nested ifs with lots of p's, right? It's kind of a weird idea that the fi is the closing of the if. You know why they did it that way? Because they they, they don't want to use parentheses of braces for these purposes. They have other purposes. The braces, we've seen it. The braces and the parentheses, they all have special uses. So they had to figure out a different way to finish an if. So they did it with writing it backwards. And you notice that the for is finishing with the done. So it's like a linguistic kind of endings instead of semantic endings. So this is just going to print clone two and clone three because it's only if it's not clone one will it print. Right next. <clears throat> when to use braces in an if. So this is a bit weird also because sometimes you don't have to use a brace. So the normal thing is like, if name equals box. So I'm testing a string and I use a single equal with spaces. <clears throat> then blah, blah, blah. Versus if grep quiet, grep minus Q is quiet. We, we learned when we use in the video, we talked about grep. We have with Q. We didn't learn with Q. Okay. So grep with a Q means don't give me back the lines that I asked for. You know, I ask for lines. Give back all Be quiet. Just go. Don't give back the reverse. There is a thing like that. There is a thing where you give back any line that doesn't matter. I think it's minus B. But grep minus Q is um, just keep quiet. Just tell me, did you find it or didn't you find it? Just give me a true or false value. So that means that the grep minus Q is already giving me a true or false value, which the if can accept. If you think about the test. When I did the braces, the test is a function which gave me back a true or false value. Did the test fulfill its test or not? Did it already fail its test? It's a true or false value. So what's the difference if I give the if a different true or false value? I mean, a, a true or false value via a different method. So that other method is that correct knows how to give a true or false value. I suppose there are other functions that could give a true or false value. So I'm saying if grep some text from some file, then do it. So that's what just tell me if it is in the file, then do something. I think it's a homework assignment like that. Like if the file contains a certain word, then delete it. The square brackets are a symbol for test. And if the statement checks, and if statement, sorry, checks the, the exit status of the command in order to decide which branch to take. A grep minus Q text is a command, but name equals Bob is not, it's just an expression. Test is a command which takes an expression and evaluates it. If test name equals Bob, then since square brackets are sitting in the test command, you can then rewrite it. All right, this is a little bit missing the point of what I'm trying to say here, but fine. It's just explaining how the test is a, is a synonym for that. So the main point I was trying to say is that test, no, what's written here on the slide is correct. I'm just saying I added a different point, which is that. That test gives back a true or false value, and so does grep minus two. Okay, more testing tools. You can test if one or two conditions is met with a minus O. So this would be or. You see that? If I equals clone one or it equals clone I equals clone two, then echo one, else echo seven. Okay, next. Here is a, a, a snippet of the manual page for the test command. And you see that it has the and and the or operation, the A and the O. And it also has string comparisons. It also has like things like minus Z string. If the length of the string is zero, right? Which means it's just like a, a null. Are you supposed to know all of these? No, yes, all no, these. But they're actually pretty obvious. I mean, the obvious one you should know equals EQ. If an integer is equal to another integer, notice you don't use the equal sign. That you have to know. You use the equals for strings. For integers, you use the EQ, and you have GE greater than GT great. Uh, you know, so GE is greater than or equal to. GT is greater than. LE is less why than or equal to. Why did they make it this way? Easy for the integers. 
because in scripting languages, they are not typed. In, in, if you learn Python, first of all, there's no type. So that means nine could be a string or a number. But if I'm, what do I want to compare it to something else? But in a, like zero nine is equal to nine. So this signifies. But I want to compare them, let's say, as you know, nine point zero. Let's say I don't know, is equal to nine. Yeah. So I want to compare them as numbers, not as strings. I have to specify. EQ. In other words, the function. I'm, there's no type. So the, the, normally the type helps me know how to do the comparison. But when there's no type, I have to tell it what type of comparison I want to do. So therefore, I need to have two different kinds of comparison. But excellent question. Yeah. That's a wise answer question. It gave me a point on which to explain it. Uh, <laughs> By the way, to go back and that, you do need both. What? You do need both. You do need both. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I, I assume. I, I, I don't use this on a daily basis anymore. I used to. Um, more tests. So these ones you don't have to know, but um, but let's see. These are on files. For example, minus D file should be obvious. It isn't a directory. Minus E file doesn't exist. I think it's minus X over here on the bottom. Is it executable? So this is like saying, I can say test minus E file name. And it'll tell me if it exists or not. And that's exactly what I do here in this example. I say, first list the files and then put that value in I. And then if minus D of the I that I have, in other words, if it's a directory, not, in other words, I'm trying to differentiate between files and directories, because LS will give me everything. So if it's a directory, then you print its name. Another example. Now here's another example. Walk, look over here. Here I did ls and I just printed i. Notice over here that I have to do. What does this mean? Can anyone tell me what this means? Not. Not. And then what's my is r readable? Readable. Yeah. We can go back. R. Read permission is granted. So makes sense. R. So I mean, you have to think in the context of a file, it could be readable, it could be writable, it could be executable. Uh, now, why did I have to write my direct? Why didn't I just write if readable dollar i? Because we're probably in if we're in a, di a different directory than where the file actually is. Because file. we we're let's exactly. we're probably probably in the we have to be in order for my directory to work. I have to be ls my directory means I'm be above my directory. Yeah. So it's giving me the content of something beneath me. So therefore, I need to tell it the thing that I found that I, which is actually beneath me. So its actual path is my directory. It's beneath me. It's my directory slash whatever it found. Oh, that makes sense. And I have to write that my directory there, whereas I did it over here because it was in the current location. It was in the current location. Yeah, the urine. Yeah. Folder. Yeah, I mean the I mean the location where I'm doing the LS. Here I'm doing an LS on my directory. So if it's readable, then print it. Okay, let getting command line parameters. Now this is this thing is actually, I don't know if you ever did this in C. This is a lot of people don't learn in C. Did you remember the R the C and the R V or get it in C like some kind of optional course? We yeah. it's a long time. So in if you think about it. Here, Asher, if you think about it, every every command that we write, let's say ls. What is ls? It's a it's a C program. Somebody wrote a compile. And it's taking uh, parameters from the command line. It says it doesn't say, I don't run ls and it says, what files would you like to list? And then I type in something. There's no input output. How does it know what to do? Based on command line parameters. How do you write a C++ program like that? So the answer in C++ is that you write something like this, um, main, and then you write, um, it, uh, uh, it's char star. Yeah, char, thank you, char star arg v, like that, and then int. I don't think you have to do the brackets. I think it might you do char, once you do, you do. Char, once you do, you do. because you it's do. a string, it's a list of strings. In C, it's a list of strings. 
this is a, a two-dimensional array. It has to be a two-dimensional array because so now you can say like this, C out, you know, arg V of zero, for example. And that will be the first parameter that he wrote on the command line. In other words, just like every function has parameters, the main function has parameters. But where do they come from? They can't come from another function because he's the starting point. Where do they come from? From the command line. So I can write ls minus l. The minus l will be in argv. And then if I do space file name, then file name will be argv of one. So that's how you do it in C++. How do you do the same? You can do the same thing in shell. I want to write a shell script where the person writes, you know, my script. That's the name of the program. And then he writes a, b, c. And I want to get the a and the b and the c. How do I get them? So that's what we're saying here. So let's say you run a script with parameters minus script one, two, three, four. So echo zero, if you do echo, it's like print, echo dollar zero, print the name, which would be in this case my script. It's a little bit confusing because you might have, in some, whatever, I would have thought that minus zero would be the whole line. But in any case, it's not, it's just in my script. Minus one, you know, we call it like the zero parameter. Because, because the real, because if you think about it, the first parameter, the zeroth one, was not was not uh, ls. It was ls the minus l. It was the second thing. The first thing is the name of the program, and that's the zero parameter. So then the first parameter is dollar one. The second is dollar two, and the dollar pound sign is dollar numbers for the number sign. So the number of parameters, how many parameters I got, that's very important because I don't want to print ones that don't exist. I want to let's say I want to use them. I want to know how many I have, and then dollar and then dollar star is the entire list, not including the name. So how would I print the name and the entire parameter list? Probably dollar sign zero. Right. Echo dollar sign. Echo dollar sign zero, and then space. No, no, not echo. Just uh, one echo. Echo dollar sign zero space dollar sign star. That would give me on one line everything. Now dollar sign ampersand is the same as above. Um, dollar sign star. There is a, what? It's we'll, the same as star. It's the same as star. We'll see that we're going to use that in arrays in bash arrays. We're going to use a differentiation between the star and the ampersand. But for now, it's the same. But you'll see that they're kind of interchangeable and kind of not. The dollar sign dollar sign is the process number. In your operating systems, of course, we talked about that processes have a PID, a process ID number. So if you want to know what the process ID of the current script is while it's running, you can print it out with dollar dollar. Okay. <clears throat> now, what am I doing here? Um, while the number, okay, this is interesting. I think I have a screen here. While the number of, uh, Parameters is NE. What do you think NE is? No, not existing. Yeah. No, good guess. Any other guess? Not zero. Are you? It's not equal zero. Not equal. Why did I not equal zero? Because remember, by numbers, we use letters. So if the number of parameters is not equal to zero, if the number of parameters is equal to zero, then he didn't give me any parameters. I don't want to print them. I don't want to do anything with them. <clears throat> do. So this is a wild do. Um, um, right. We just like we have a for do. Now we haven't seen a wild do. Um, and again, it's done. So then we say like this. Echo, yeah, I just gave the full path for echo, user bin echo. That's not meaningful. What did you do to dash? What's the dash? What's the dash n? Do not print the trailing line, new line. You know, let's print everything on one line. So I say it like this echo the current number of arguments. So it's going to echo dollar number sign, which would be four. Let's say he gave me four parameters. He wrote my script one, two, three, four. It's going to print four. What else? Then it's going to print dollar one, the first parameter. So it's going to print one. I mean, whatever, yeah, one. Then I do this new command we did later, shift. Shift is like the left shift command in 
in, in your name Hashem in your computer architecture. You're pushing off one. So shift means push off one parameter. Which one? The first one. So now we so now when I do a loop again, what's the number of arguments going to be? Only three, but it's still not equal to zero. So I'm going to print three, and then I'm going to print the second argument. When I say print dollar one, dollar one has now been updated to be whatever the second parameter used to be. Because I've shifted everything left. And dollar pound is also updated. And dollar pound is also updated. It, it's gone. I have destroyed the when I do shift on a on a parameter, it's like it's gone. It's mamish like uh up like computer architecture where you just you push that digit off, you can't get it back. Is it it's not possible to let's say shift negative one to get it back? No, no, it's no. as far as I know. Shift negative one. No, I don't it might be it's still there. If I didn't override it, it might be still there. I don't, I think it's been overwritten. Uh, shift four. If I had done shift space four instead of just shift, it would have removed, it would have shifted four parameters at once. It would only have done plus. Now it's all what? It would only have done the plus. Uh, yeah, because it would have immediately gone to zero and then it would have. Yeah. And what did I write here at the bottom? Also possible to write for i in dial in up uh, in all the parameters. See what what, what is the dollar sign star is all the parameters that we one two three four for i in all the parameters echo the per, each parameter. So that would do a loop of four times and also print each parameter. Uh, that would be kind of the same thing, except I wouldn't have print because I didn't print the number of parameters at the current time. Okay, now math operations. So this is also a bit weird. Um, in order to do a math operation, we have a special uh, function called expression. EXPR stands for expression, math expression. And the, actually the reason why it's done, same thing in, 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 in Python or, or PHP, what they do is uh, functions that, um, how do I say this? It's faster to have an external program that is compiled in C++ and, is, and, 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 and that knows how to do various things that you need, you know, whatever you need, if you need, for example, addition. Or, so you have something compiled and then you can do addition using that external function, which is a compiled program. Because if I do it myself in the language, then that means I'm doing it, um, uh, and I have to translate many lines of code, whatever. It, it, it's, I wanna have, it's better, it'll run faster if I have a compiled, uh, function that I run. So that's what I did it this way. Expression Z plus three. So why don't you have to do a dollar sign? A dollar sign there's two. Well, it's interesting because what is Z's initial value? I have to do the dollar sign because otherwise it would think it's a letter C. No, why did it come saying? It's at, some, at some point. The On the left line. side, I don't put a dollar sign. It's an assignment. Fourth line. Why do you have to do Fourth that? line. Oh, well, we didn't get there. Why do you have to do the expression part at all? Why can't you just say Z equals dollar sign Z plus three? Um, it won't know what, how to do plus. There's no plus is not part of the language. Oh. That's what I was explaining. Um, except, okay. except here. You can also, that's the old way of doing it, the expression. The new way is with the dollar double parentheses. Remember, we learned already the dollar single parentheses. What were the dollar single parentheses? Run the command. That was to run the command. This is a different thing. Dollar double parentheses. Why does this exist? Because they were trying to add things to the language and they had to figure out a way of symbolizing it that was not gonna overlap anything that already existed. So dollar double parentheses means uh, C style. That's what it means. It means now I'm in C, I'm in C++. So now I can do dollar Z plus three and now the plus four comes up. You understand? It, it's a special thing, C style. So I can also do, so since it's C style, I don't actually need the dollar in front of the Z and that's the third example. You hear that? It's crazy. So in other words, basically, it's actually the same thing in C++. In C++, you can write ASM and then write assembly code. You can actually insert assembly into your C++. If you want a certain section to run faster, you can write the assembly. And then 
And then, so here we're doing the same kind of thing. We're in one language and we're going to break out into Z. Now, there's the old, another old way of doing it, which is let Z equal Z plus three, which is I specifically use the let command for assignment. And then I don't have to, then I don't write the dollar here. And I don't, whatever, that's, that's syntax. Let Z equal Z plus three. Be the, that's the let way of doing it. I can also do it also ha, it knows how to evaluate the plus. And it also knows how to evaluate the plus. The let knows how to evaluate the plus. I suppose well, that's I don't know. This is a good question for research. I should research whether let is a, a external function or it's a part of the language. You see what I'm saying? It's hard to in C plus plus you can always tell the function because of prints in 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 this language, you can't tell. I mean, because of that, but that's a function that you wrote. I'm not sure. Remember, what do you want to run? How do you do that in C? Well, we're going to actually learn how to do that. But how do you run a, a separate compiled function in your program? Not a function, but a separate compiled program. I have three programs that are compiled, and I want one of them to run the other one sometimes. As you pass it, the program. I want to give it the name of the compiled program, and it runs it. Is that not what it includes? Though? No, includes functions. Wow. Include means while I'm when I compile it, compile this oh, as a function. function. I'm saying no, I'm just pointing out the difference. So understand what programming is. There's two different things. One is taking a function that I wrote, compiling it with another function I didn't write, and making a bigger program which has two functions in it. That's include. But I'm talking about here a compiled program. I'm not including it. I'm just it's compiled when I run it. Anyway. That's the way shell is designed to work like that. It's designed to let you run. So why is that the old way? It looks a lot cleaner to me than the let way. Yeah. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, you, you, can say you don't need to do the it is old. I'm saying it's old because it's you know, it is old and this is newer. I'm just giving you history a little bit of that. Yeah. Why it's not, I'm not saying it's better. Why would I, why would I have you say once they have the let, letter. why did they yeah. buy people didn't like writing let? So I think it's all about dollar signs and six brackets. <laughs> um, so wait a second. Let quote permit the use of spaces and variable assignment. So I can actually now use the spaces if I put quotes here, which is those very confusing. I mean, why should that exactly? There's normally you don't write spaces, but if you want to write spaces, then you have to put quotes. And I can also do an increment like this. Notice here is in a word and existed, obviously. This is also new. No, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess. Well, I'm not sure about that. If n didn't exist, it might have just been zero, right? All variables might be zero if you did the sign of Again, in C plus plus, you need to decide to define a variable before you can add it to it. But I'm not sure if that's true in the shell. Doesn't necessarily, it's not necessarily true. Um, but parentheses here means also break me into C++. So it's kind of the same as the dollar parentheses, just parent, double, double parentheses. And here, double parentheses, n equals n plus one, which means why that you need, kind of- Why do you need the dollar sign for the double parentheses? What? Why do you need the dollar sign? Oh, because we're not a, wait, why? Don't we need the dollar sign for the double parentheses in order to make it C style? No, that's what I'm saying. You also choose the you can also do it like that without the dollar. So why do we use the dollar sign for? Um, it might be in certain kind. Of, maybe when you're doing an assignment outside, you know, this is a standalone command. But when I'm taking it and giving it to that, I may have to put a. I think I put a dollar sign there. You see what I'm saying? Like here, it's just standalone. Here, the equals will be confused. It might think I'm assigning Z the value, the literal letters. You know, parentheses, parentheses. You see what I'm saying? How does this assignment know what I'm doing here? But in the bottom one, there's no assignment. It's all internal. In, 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 the, in, the, in the second to last one, it's all internal. Now look at the, the last one here. N equals dollar sign N plus one is the last one. Why isn't the right one dollar? Why is the right one? The, the L value must, have, must not have a, a, a dollar. You know what that means? What an L value is? Yeah, left hand value. The left hand value can't have a dollar sign. So in the first example on the left, it doesn't. But in the second example, it does. Because that's essentially saying n equals n plus one. 
So it's getting a little bit confusing. Now, these are things that I tried and had the trial by you know trial and error kind of because like you don't you, you didn't necessarily think of that, but if this works because of no dollar, because I'm I'm saying n equals n plus one. So but if I have a dollar that would again, this is the assignment and the increment all together. Here, you see, this is saying just take z plus three. And there's no assignment there. And then the assignment is outside of the C world. You see that? The assignment is outside of the C world in the, in the, in the first, in, in the third example. All right, these are, these are a bit um, complex or little picky details um, that you might encounter. Okay. We saw that you can create input, output, and bash built in. Here. We saw that you can create output with the echo command. Bash has another built in command for doing output. It's called printf. So echo is not a built in thing. Echo is it a separate command that's compiled that you can run somewhere on your file system. But printf is not somewhere in your file system. It's a built in command. There are more built in commands and they can be found at this location. It's actually a very nice um, list here of. There's well organized and clear and easy to read of, of built in bash commands. Um, for so, for example, uh, printf is more versatile than echo. It allows you to format the printing. Well, I don't do that well here. Here I do. Um, to read a single line of the standard input, you use the built in shell command read. So, there's another command called read. Read means read a line like cn. Remember, it's different from uh, just grabbing the parameters from the print. This is while the program is running, I can do a read. Read A and then print F, dollar N. Why is the A without a dollar sign here? Because we're assigning it. Because we're assigning it about it. <clears throat> now I can also do read A, print U typed a uh, uh, percent S. Percent S means this is a, a, whole, a placeholder for a string. A string is supposed to go here. And then backslash n, new line. Now, what string do I want to put there? Whatever string is after the quotations. If, you if I had two s's, two, then I would have dollar a space dollar b, then both of them would go in. And the order is what Scovea is what determines the order. I also have one else in addition to dollar s. I have dollar d for decimal point value. Or I think decimal value. I think it's integer actually. I think if you want a float, it's dollar, it's a it's percent F for a float. You can look those up, but there's, I think it's percent F. I think it's even B for binary, I think. But there's, and there's a lot of certain amount of formatting, print F. Well, you're going to use print F when we get to C. And C, they print F. Okay, so here's another example. Read examples. While read, do, so while read, there's, that's an infinite loop, right? You're going to keep reading. And then echo, what is this dollar reply? We didn't define any dollar reply. So this is a built in variable, which, and also with read, what's while read? It should say while read A. Well, I could have done it that way. I could have done while read A, do echo A. But in a, they sort of have a shorthand way of doing that. You just do a read. I don't care what the name of the variable goes into a default variable called dollar reply. And then and then that's what his reply was. Whatever he typed is his reply to my request. And then I type it. Read and print in a loop. Because no variable was specified, the entire line of the text is stored in a special variable reply. This loop continues until you press control D, not control C, right? Control D is the end of the file. Is, 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 is uh means end of file eof so you can simulate like he's reading a file the read is kind of like he's reading a file what file is he reading the keyboard is like a file and then the control d is like i'm telling it end of file because remember like, what, what else would i write like you know a, a, how else would i tell him the end of the file everything with a possible letter i need a special control symbol um equivalent to the above while read text. So here, instead of doing just read, I did read A or read text. Echo text. You could also read directly into an array and then print each element in a loop. So for example, 
read minus a my, my array. So minus a means it's an array. A stands for array. By yeah. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Um, so minus a means it's, on, it's an array. So now if you type what well, you created the array there. I created it on the fly, yes. Just like just like this example, read text. Text is not defined before I, I did that. So I did read minus a array. So I made an array called my array. And now if the guy types today is a lovely day, so to, the word today will be the first element of the array is with the second, a, et cetera. So now I can do like this. For I in, and what is this? My array, here we're seeing that, uh, that ampersand again. If you remember we saw an ampersand and, or a star when we wanted all the parameters. And I said they're really equivalent kind of. So actually here, uh, the, there's actually a difference here. Here you have to use the ampersand. You could have theoretically used a star here. My array star, would be all the elements of the array. And this my array ever goes all the elements of it. What's the difference? Well, we'll talk about it more. I have other slides about it. But what the difference is, is that in this case, it will, it will, the I will get each time a new value. Two days, then the next time will be is, next time a, next like time you wonderful. It automatically does shit. It already does, it already separates the string into component parts, and each or in the array gets one of those component parts. Whereas if I did a star, how big would the array be? We'd have one element in it. What would that element be? The first element it would be today is a wonderful day. Because the whole thing would just get thrown into the element. So, so it would also print out today is a wonderful day. There's also a difference, except that it would be on one line. If it was, if I use the, since I use the ampersand, it's going to be on four separate lines, five separate lines. So that's not an ampersand, by the way. What? That's not an ampersand. Which is oh, you're right. Everything some say yeah, at some point. So that's what refers it to each individual one? Yes. The at side is the individual ones. Mm -hmm. And the star means lump it all together, glob it essentially. And we'd also put that star in right where the ampersand, right where the at sign is. Okay. So now that we're talking about so now we start talking about arrays. Oh, before we get to arrays, you can't ever refer to it though just by the array name. What? Then what would happen if you do for i That's and good. i array? What would happen? What? Maybe for i and i array. Wait a second. From the current slide. Yeah, I lost place. Uh, oh. What would what happen? What? Do for i in, and then just did my array instead of without the sub. Um, my array without parentheses, you're saying? Without square brackets, yeah. Without square brackets, uh, it would probably think it's a variable named my array and not know what it'd be blank. And when you input an array, how does it know it stop? You mean the read line? Yeah, it's uh, space. Uh, yeah, in the read line. In the read line, line it, you enter. So it's, it's read. It's not the read. It's not the array. array. It's space read. The read reads until it enter. So how is the array separated by space? If I wrote today, space is, space a, space wonderful, space day, space. Got it. So then it's. Got it. If I wrote it without spaces, then it would be one string. Yeah. Okay. Delineating the variable. Can I use a variable in a string? In fact, uh, I can use sorry, a variable in a string, and Bash will know it's a variable because it starts with the dollar sign. For example, this is a kind of review. Bar equals Mr. Hello. Bar dancing. You know, so hello, Mr. Dancing. It's going to print out hello is it. But what if I want the variable to be adjacent to the string? How will Bash know where the variable name ends and the string begins? So in other words, if I wrote hello, var dancing, it's going to look for a variable called bar dancing and not find it. And it's going to print hello blank. You understand? So how do I tell it? No, the bar, if I put a space, then it knows. But what if I don't want a space? So the solution is use parentheses, the braces, 
to delineate it. So I write hello bar in in braces dancing. And then it knows that the begin knows that it's sort of delineating the beginning and the end of the variable name. And anything after that is a, a regular string. Okay. What would it do in the sorry? Uh, what would it do in the without the parentheses? It would it would it would look for a variable called bar dancing. It was not defined, uh, so it would print blank. Print hello, and then uh, it wouldn't be an error. Just all variables, no, they're all defined, kind of. They're just blank. Is that similar to what was going on in the previous when we were dealing with the array? We're we using the brackets. Oh, wait. No, no, no. Well, let's go on. We'll talk. Don't worry. We're going to deep, deep into arrays. I got a whole lecture on arrays. Yeah, it doesn't sound fun. Uh, yeah, it's, it's not as straightforward as. As a C plus plus, right? But I guess it's less powerful than C plus plus. Yeah, well, how, do how would you how would you easily get an input from a user and immediately put it into an array? You know what I mean? It would come in as a string, and then you'd have to parse it into a loop, and you'd have to do the work yourself. Here we have met, we have some powerful methods. Uh, <laughs> it's easier here. It's easier here to do that if you wanted to take a string. That the guy gave you and made it get into an array of separate parts. We just learned how to do that in C. You'd have to manually go through it, looking and cut it every time you had a every time you had you know, copy the variable, copy the letters until you lost space. And you'd have to do it yourself. But that means to get that power, we have to sacrifice something, which is complexity. We have to learn tools. <laughs> okay, do that. And now this specifying. Oh, so we saw this before, right? The last page we just saw it. Ah, <laughs> well, now we saw previously that we can specify a range using braces. You can also use braces to specify specific elements in a range. So, for example, I can do echo one, two, ten, right, with the braces, just like I did with the four for i in, and I did one to ten, and to get a loop of ten times, I can just use it on the command line echo one to ten, and it'll print me one to ten. I can also do echo WER. So it'll print me WER. Right? But it's interesting because I can do, look at the bottom of them. So what's the point of that? I can do hello AB. So it'll print hello A and then hello B again. In other words, it's like I've, I've uh, multi, it's like a multiplier on this. I've multiplied whatever is coming after it. If I did, so what here, look at this next one. Assuming a dollar I, a dollar one is the word go, and I write go. This is actually an exam question where somebody wrote on an exam, and it was not nice because we didn't teach it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't write that exam, I was not the repository course, uh, but it was on the exam, and nobody, I guess, nobody got it right, or some people would guess it right, but it was a multiple choice question. So, anyway, echo. But I was like, wait, a if you're actually serious about putting this on an exam, I better give a slide about it. So that's what the slide is. Uh, dollar, that was when I, but you know, dollar one, comma one, comma two, comma three. What does this mean? So it means like this I'm making an expansion for first one is blank, second one is one, second one is two, second one is three. So it'll be X, so it'll be, it'll print out go. And with nothing after it, then go with one, then go with two, then go with three. Okay. Okay. It does it all in one line? Or... Yes. Yeah. The echo is given, it's, the expansion is not, is, is not, the echo is not doing the expansion. The expansion is happening, the echo is seeing the expansion. So the echo, from his perspective, is kind of a lot. Right? There's nothing to do with the echo. <clears throat> I could do that in a for loop, right? I could do for i in dollar one parentheses comma in. Okay. Environment variables. So we're talking about variables. It's all variables. Environment variables, special variables defined by each user's login script. So when you log in, there's a default script that gets run. When you log into a Unix machine, there's a script called, there's different names that it could be, but it could be called dot login. It usually starts with a dot. It could be called dot CSHRC. 
It's called or dot bash. It could be called a lot of things, but it's a it's a it's run automatically when you log in. And over there, it, certain variables are defined. So, for example, um, a variable called dollar home, dollar path, and dollar user. Each of those are defined. And here's the output of it. Dollar home is the home directory, usually, and it's capitalized by the by uh, by convention. The path is all the paths that you have to look for, and the user is the username then. So, so the path and that game is what? The, like which part is home in the first line, or just the first? home would be the output of home a cat dance of user. That's my home directory. That's the path for my home directory. The path is the, all the places that when I type a command, it looks for the program to run. We talked about that in like the yeah. first lecture. Um, and dancing is the username. These are called, why are they called environment variables? They're called environment variables because I didn't define them in a particular script and then it's true in that script. Right? They're, they're global, it's like globals. But they're in the environment. There's, I can use this variable in a script and I don't have to define it. It's already been defined before I start running my script. All right, now some tricky stuff with uh, defining and undefining variables. Okay, look at this. Uh, How do you define them? Well, variables don't have to be defined. That's what the first line here shows. Echo dollar X. I, did I define it? No. I just printed something that in C++, what would this give you? Error. An error, because you can't print a variable that you didn't define. But here I can print a variable and it'll just be undefined. So even a blank line, no problem. I can print, I can print blank there. It's like, it's almost like it is defined, just blank. We call it undefined. Now I have a special thing. Dollar, and now what's supposed to be in the brackets, in the parade braces is the variable name. But I can write the variable name and then write a colon minus, um, and then whatever I want. A is just an example, colon minus. So what does colon minus do? Colon minus means if X is undefined, then then this is what you should, then what should be here is the following. And then I can write A, I can write Apple, I can write another variable name, whatever I want. If X was defined, it would be X in that case, not A. Yeah, yeah, exactly. If X is undefined, then A. But if X is defined, then it'll print X. So in this case, X is undefined. So I didn't define it. These get to read these lines as a single program. So first I have X undefined. Then I say print A if X is undefined. Well, X is undefined, so it'll print A. Then I say print X again, and it'll print a blank line because X is still blank, it's still undefined. The next line, colon equals, is different from colon minus. Colon equals means if it's undefined, then define it. Find it, equal means assign it. So define it as A. So now what I do after, so it'll print an A then. But the next line, echo x, will print a now because ax is all of a sudden been defined. Let's go on. The next one is, I don't know when you'd ever use this, but it's if x is defined, then don't print it. And b, that's the plus b. If it is defined, colon plus means it's there, then, then print something else. But then B. Why? 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 That's so crazy to use. I don't. I can't think of it. Can you think of a case when you want to? Yeah. If you want to print, you want to print out if it's, it's there or not. Saying just as a log. Yeah. Just so, a log. Is it instead of having if exists, print yeah. out yes. Okay. Have... <coughs> Fine. Okay. If it exists, the print exists. For example. You're right. That's a good example. Now look at this. X equals. Also, you could use it in nested meaning. I think if you could actually do this, meaning if it exists, then print this, but that print could be something that's evaluating, meaning you can put in uh -huh. text. And you can put if it exists, in. then run this command on it. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. I, I didn't try all the different things you put there. Instead of a B, you say, like, could you put a back check? Exactly. And then try to run something. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, okay. But you wouldn't put that in the echo, would you? No, but let's say you want to get all the user yeah, names. Yeah. Let's say you have an array of usernames. So if the username is array actually exists and you didn't get something undefined, then get the first, get the ones that start with A and print those. 
Well, my, my, my goal here is to show you as many of the features of the language that I know, and uh, you, you can then use them. In other words, uh, in the future in your life, if you ever become a bash program, but in other words, or to understand that these things exist. Um, and to be able to sit the back of me when I ask for them. That's the hard part. Um, so now I say B is undefined. X equals, look at that weird thing. X equals, and then I don't write anything. That means undefined it. Right? Um, and then that actually was useful. That's sometimes useful because I was uh, one time like doing examples on the, I was, I was trying to, for, for this course, I was trying to come up with lots of examples. And I at one point defined an array. And then I left my computer for a week and I came back and I couldn't understand why the certain variable was giving me stuff. And, I, and it took me ages to realize that I had defined it already. It wasn't working the way I thought. I had made up a name, but it turned out that that name that I made up, I had already made up the exact same name a week earlier <laughs> and it existed and I couldn't understand. So I had to get rid of it. I had to say equals or nothing. Um, actually by a, There is a delete command. There's a delete for arrays. Also. Anyway, um, we'll, we'll talk about arrays in the whole lecture. So x equals is undefined x. And then echo if x plus. So what does that mean? If it is defined, then b. So is it defined? No. no. So it's not going to print b. So what's going to print? Blank. x. But what's x? Undefined. So it's going to be a blank line. Now I define it as x equals apple. Okay, why did I do apple, Dafka, and not a? Because for the example. I want to, for the exact next example, I want to print part of the word apple. So look, echo x, but don't print me all of x. Print me from index two, two characters. What happens if so it'll print the characters or the range? Two. Well, look, I the very specific two the, from two to two. That would be only that would be only one letter. No, no, no. I mean two. That it would be P and then L. No, I mean that's it. It is P and then L. It's, exactly. No, so it's oh, from no, it's no, from the character P. The first P. The first P. No, it's P. It's the second one. It goes down. If it's from, if it's a range from. Oh, the it's the no, no, no. I understand. A is zero. P. The second index which is the second p and the two means two characters what happens if it two means two characters only you'll see an example and you'll think it means like from it looks like in some cases where you could be if i would write like um one two it could be misleading because then it would be from one till two but it doesn't mean one two it, it's two see? that's why Dafka did this example two two so you know it's not a range it's the how many characters. The second number is how many characters. What if I print x colon one and no second part? So it's like I wrote infinity. I didn't write a limit. So it's going to print to the end. Well, shouldn't it print if you did x one? Shouldn't it print from the p first p, not from a if they start with zero? It does print from first p. Look what I wrote. Print p p l e. Um. Um, so if you put like I want name. just the for just the first character, what I have to write? Uh, one. I'd have to write colon. Oh, colon the first a. zero one. But I want the if I want the first p, and that's all. Okay. Then I'd write okay. then I'd write x colon p. Let me say x colon one colon one. One character. Yeah. Can question. What is the plus sign? The plus yeah. sign yeah. means yeah. if it is defined. That's what the plus means. Yeah, as opposed to the minus, which means if it's not defined. What? Oh, uh, okay. Now, what? Now we're getting to a a pretty advanced topic, but 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 a beautiful one. So wait, the other one was like complicated, but not necessarily. What happens if it? What if, let's say you did do it on just a, so it can't find this indices with a thrown error. So yeah. Well, let's say you tried to run that same code on just a instead of apple. Would it throw an error? Or would it? Uh, print oh, it print blank probably. Print blank. If you tried to do it on a, on a string that was only one letter long, but print the second, it would find nothing there. It wouldn't be an error. I don't think it would be an error. It would just be blank. 
Okay, uh, variable in direction. So in that, if I create two variables where the variable of, where the value of one variable happens to be the name of another variable, I can use that value as a variable name. This is called the direction. I think this actually could be related to like- um, Is there a point to this? Is there a point to when you use this? Yeah, I mean, like you could just use the other variable, you say it. Like so the dollar sign apple. No, there could be a point to it because, like, you could let's say you want a, um, a mapping. Okay. You want like this phone number, like if it's zero five four, then it's cell phone. If it's zero five two, then it's telephone. I think they could do it with that. I think it could be useful. Anyway, a. So what did I do? I said x equals apple, and then apple equals pear. So fine. There's a variable. If I did echo x, I'll get the word apple. If I do echo apple, I'll get the word pair. They're just variables. So if I do echo x, I'm going to get apple normally. But if I do echo exclamation mark x, then I'm saying take the normal print of that thing and treat it as a, as a, as a, as a pointer. In other words, the, the x was apple, but now I don't want apple. I want I don't the string apple. I want the variable apple. It's saying treat this string that you've got there that I, I asked for as a, as a, as a variable thing. Um, so it'll give me pair. So it's as if I wrote echo apple. <laughs> you don't need the brackets here, do you? For like the last line echo apple, you can just write echo dollar. Yeah, I don't need the brackets. It becomes a custom though. It becomes just a bit habitual to just always put phrases. Would it, would it work to not have an exclamation point to just have an old dollar sign? No, 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 that's that isn't that. What would double dollar sign do? Nothing, I don't know what that is. Okay. All right, we're almost at the end. This is the last slide. That would be more intuitive. Um, yeah, right. The, 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 the variable, take that as a variable, right? So instead of they wrote it with a different syntax, like, you know, why they do it like this? Well, why do they do it like this? Because it was easier for them. Okay, is this what you call feature creep? In other words, they wrote the language, it was a smaller subset of, of, of options. And then when they, they came into a certain programming problem, they needed another feature. So since they were the ones who wrote the bloody language, they could go in and then change it and add some stuff. So they write, so it, it, it's much simpler to have a new symbol to do the special thing that I want than to try to work through nesting and try to get that, to, get, the, get the program to understand that. You, know, get, you understand what I'm saying? There's an interpreter. Yeah. There's an interpreter that has to interpret this. So we, we make our lives a little bit more difficult so that the interpreter will be easier to write. Um, because it was written by, it was just written by a couple smart guys, you know, in, in the 1970s. It was just, it wasn't like a project of, like nowadays we do when C is being done, or C++, there's like, you know, or Linux, when Linux is being updated, there's like teams of thousands of people working on it all the time and they're reviewing each other's code and they're, but this is written by like two or three guys together. Okay, so, Script to print all. So this was a, I think it was a homework thing. Script to print all the files containing the string fork. Something similar, yeah. Well, we have it in the second one. So here's the script to print all the files contain. So what did I do? I say first ls. I don't know why I just threw this in here. I guess this is just like you're in. Uh, ls of everything. Somebody pointed out to me in this class that you could just write star instead of ls. Do the same thing. You don't write ls star, you just write star. Do if it's a file, <laughs> if it's a regular file, not a directory, then <clears throat> because I don't want to grep a directory, because that would I could do that. If I grep the directory, I would get the concept of the directory, the names of files, but I don't want the names of files. So grep minus q quiet. So this is like our if I have to, uh, with parentheses now here because this is just I, I, I'm not doing a, a test, I'm what running a this is actually like writing uh, dollar parentheses. But anyway, parentheses, quiet, if it's a fork, if the word fork is in the file that I have, then echo the name of the file. So it'll, so it'll print the name of the file if the word fork was grepped from it, but it won't print what was a line, it'll, because that's the quiet. And the if takes the uh, quietness. Right, the, the, the if takes the result of rep minus q, which is true or false. All right. Um, wait, wait, wait. Can you do something? 
What? It basically said, don't but, don't print anything, just return to a full film tag. All right, I'll see you in another room. We have two weeks. We have, uh, we have, um, we have him too. I'm up. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>